Salutations. Welcome to Strategy and Analysis Centre. Today's briefing, China's Type 003 Fujian and Type 004 aircraft carriers and the future of China's carrier program. Carrier 003 Fujian will likely be the best aircraft carrier outside of the US. What will 004 and follow-on carriers look like? How many aircraft carriers will China build? How big will they be? Will they be nuclear powered? See related briefings, China's aircraft carrier ambitions, Type 076 assault carrier, and 2024, US and China in conflict over Taiwan. These briefings cover important background to where China is now at with aircraft carriers after 10 years of operations. This has been an incremental approach with the Chinese Navy now having mastered all relevant carrier capabilities with the exception of catapult assisted launching. At some stage during this briefing, please press the like button. It really does help the channel. If the Nimitz class and derivatives are the benchmark for CVNs, the benchmark for conventional carriers is the Kitty Hawk class. Here, we have an image of USS America, one of the Kitty Hawk classes, one of the Kitty Hawk class. And this was actually shorter than the other Kitty Hawks at around 319 metres in overall length. The Kitty Hawks were very good carriers, able to operate all the aircraft that the nuclear-powered Nimitz class could. This briefing will look at what does China want its carriers to do? How big do they need to be? What air wing do they need? The force mix in terms of conventional and or nuclear powered. How many carriers are needed? What will the next carrier look like, carrier 004? Delivery timeline for carriers, one or two shipyards, and intelligence gaps. So what does China want its carriers to do? Well, for Taiwan invasion scenario, they are not essential. Certainly, stealth UCABs would be helpful, but more broadly, their importance will be to counter US ops against China's action against Taiwan. In the South China Sea, they're not critical, unless the island bases there have been taken out. But the anti-submarine warfare aircraft will be important. In the second island chain, they will be very important in terms of timely air support to the ships at that area, at that range from the mainland. And then further out into the Western Pacific, they will be crucial. In terms of out of area operations, for example, the Indian Ocean, they'd be essential with a full spectrum of carrier capabilities required, but only for specific periods. So the operational requirements of the carrier, including the air wing are, range endurance need to be good, but not global, high flight ops tempo for short periods, stealth fighter strike aircraft will be crucial, fixed wing airborne early warning and control aircraft will be crucial, and airborne anti-submarine warfare aircraft will be crucial. So how big? Here's a comparison of 003 Fujian with the Kirio class and the Nimitz and derivative. Note this is illustrative. I'm not suggesting these figures are 100% accurate. But it does indicate that the available flight deck of 003 Fujian is very good, which would be important for air wing size and flight ops tempo. Is 003 about as big as a conventionally powered aircraft carrier can be? if you need a sustained speed of around 30 knots? Is Zero 3 big enough? Can it do the job China needs? If yes, do Chinese carriers need to be bigger than Zero Zero Three? Next, let's look at the air wing for the Fujian, consisting of J-15 fighters and those able to uh, conduct or act as buddy refuelers, which I'd suggest all could be. J-15 early uh, electronic warfare aircraft derivatives, J-35 or whatever it ends up being called, stealth fighter, GJ-11 or a derivative or something very similar to it, KJ-600 early warning and control aircraft, Z-18 anti-submarine warfare helos, and importantly here, the Z-18 it's essentially the same size as the AW101 or EH101. 
He's a very large uh, cabin volume, uh, certainly a lot larger than the SH-60 Seahawk or the Z-20 uh, helicopter, so they're very capable. And Z-18, search and rescue or carrier onboard delivery aircraft. So they're the types of aircraft you'd want on the, on the air wing. What's the total number of aircraft that 003 Fujian might have? Well, for the Ford, for example, there's figures of around 72 to 76 as a standard air wing. For the Nimitz, around 78 as standard. These are not maximum figures. And the Kitty Hawk class could accommodate a similar number sized air wing. So for today's briefing, we're going to work on 70 aircraft as a notional air wing, not maximum, and using a similar paradigm to US thinking in terms of structuring the uh, carrier air wing. So 24 J35s and or GJ11 UCAVs, 24 J15 fighters that can also provide the uh, buddy tank capability, five J15 electronic warfare aircraft, five KJ600 airborne early warning and control, 10 Z18 anti-submarine warfare helicopters, and two Z18 search and rescue slash carrier onboard delivery helicopters. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below how you'd come up with a, a 70 aircraft air wing for the 003 Fujian. Next, propulsion. Conventional nuclear force mix and numbers. So nuclear power brings for an aircraft carrier, for example, high continuous power generation, no refueling at sea, and more fuel and ammunition available for aircraft. But is offset by higher initial costs, higher operating costs and investment in infrastructure, and higher disposal costs. Conventional propulsion with IAP promises much. Also, plan has very capable large AORs, underway replenishment ships, supporting it. Is China building more? So the US has 11 carriers, but one is always undergoing refueling of its nuclear reactor and midlife update. So it's approximately four years out of service. Effectively, then, only 10 carriers are available to the US Navy. Of this, six are likely to be available at around 30 days notice, with an additional one available at longer times. So 10 carriers for the US gives you six available with confidence at around 30 days and one at around 60 days notice. China's carrier requirements. Well, China doesn't need carriers for coastal defense. In the Northern Theater Fleet, with a focus on the Korean Peninsula and or Japan, I assess that the plan will want two carriers available. In the Eastern Theater Fleet, with a focus on Taiwan and or Japan, I assess the plan would want two available. In the Southern Theatre Fleet, with a focus on the South China Sea and or Taiwan, again, I assess the plan would want two available. And other, for out of air operations, I assess that the plan would want one available at reduced availability. So that then means six at around 30 days notice and one at a longer time frame. Now, none of the Navy theatre fleets require nuclear powered carriers for their theatres of operations. Out of air operations may require nuclear powered carriers. So, China could have a mix of conventional and nuclear powered carriers, but if so, they would need to add one to the total of carriers uh, in their inventory, in their fleet. What next? Carrier 004. Plan has built one-off classes before, the Type 051 Bravo Destroyer, for example, and then moved on. It has also moved straight into serial production of a new larger vessel, the Type 055 Destroyer, for example. And the plan has also a history of building vessels in pairs before moving on. We could look at uh, the Liaoning and Shandong, for example, and a, and a few of the Destroyer classes. So all options are possible. Timeline, carrier construction. As mentioned in a previous briefing, the plan had already begun construction of a new carrier before the preceding one was fully operational. For example, uh, the Liaoning, like commissioned in 2012, but the Shandong had already been laid down in March 2012. And with the Fujian, 
just recently launched, some block modules have been completed in around May 2020. Have we seen evidence of 004 uh, construction beginning? So major work was done at Jiannan Shipyard in Chongqing Island, Shanghai, to be able to build aircraft carriers in block construction method. Can the planned block build carriers elsewhere? So we have some intelligence gaps. What we don't know, carrier capable UCAPs, the GJ11s for example, do we have any evidence of this? The KJ600, any evidence of an anti-submarine warfare carrier onboard delivery derivatives? Dalian, has work been done to allow it to build aircraft carriers by block construction instead of traditional laying of the keel? This is important as building at two sites would be needed to quickly achieve high production levels. And we look at uh, how China goes about the production of the type 055 and 052 deltas at two yards uh, simultaneously. Nuclear reactors for a carrier, not multiple SSN reactors. Any evidence and not rumours. Any evidence of construction of more type 901 fast underway replenishment ships or something similar? The plan's view of the Type 076, is it a possible substitute for carriers? See my earlier briefing, which is linked in the description below. If so, then possibly less carriers are required. In summary, 2022 and onwards. Carrier 003 Fujian is a big carrier and likely capable enough to satisfy all operational requirements. At this stage, I assess 003 will be the first of a pair, at least. For 004, there are likely subtle changes in terms of moving the forward port side jet blast deflector off the angle deck and or slightly lengthen the ship to move the starboard jet blast deflector forward of the forward lift. To conduct operations out to the second island chain and further into the Western Pacific area, the plan doesn't need nuclear powered aircraft carriers. Nuclear powered carriers are not a certainty over the medium term, although they are certainly possible. If this is the plan's assessment, then we probably won't see CBN soon. Given the likely ongoing limited number of aircraft carriers out to 2035 as an example, it is more likely that the Navy will maintain Plan 16 Liaoning and 17 Shandong as operational out to the medium term, rather than dispose of them, as they still offer significant capability with an updated air wing, in particular the J-35s. Assessment. Assess that carrier 004 will be very likely very similar to 003 with moderate confidence. Likely the plan will build up to around 10 aircraft carriers over the longer term with moderate confidence. As I assessed, that would be enough for likely operations. Plan unlikely to construct nuclear powered aircraft carriers in the near term with moderate confidence, as conventionally powered carriers can satisfy the operational requirement. Liaoning and Shandong highly likely to be maintained in service with an updated air wing with high confidence. Plan likely to achieve 10 conventionally powered carriers or 11 with a mix of conventional and nuclear powered aircraft carriers, including Liaoning and Shandong over the long term with moderate confidence. Plan could have 10 carriers by around 2040 if two yards build simultaneously. That concludes today's briefing. Uh, thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions uh, for future briefings from subscribers. So please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Vale de Cero.